HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, you'll meet the four candidates interviewing for the Hopkinton School Superintendent position. Elmwood School kicked off the 20th year of their We Deliver program. Hopkinton Drug hosted their annual open house. And Matt Clark has your HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. At this past Monday's meeting, the planning board received an update on the downtown corridor project. So conducted um, safety analysis of, uh, the, of key intersections along uh, the corridor. You know, there's about 17,000 vehicles a day that are on Main Street. Um, bicycle accommodation uh, within the car, there are a couple different options. On road, we, you know, in the lane, separated bike lanes, and then a two-way separated bike lane. I'm gonna go over those in, in one minute. Pedestrian amenities, ADA ramps are, are you know, a little bit um, are not prevalent right now along Main Street. And then with new sidewalks going through there, we'll have new, all new ADA ramps throughout the project limits and all the side streets and uh, you know, through driveways that are, as necessary. Um, parking, you know, we're working with the town and the Chamber of Commerce on parking. We know there's been some impact. We're looking to you know, mitigate and, uh, and get new off-street parking that will mitigate some of the stuff on, you know, directly on Main Street. And then the major intersections, obviously, Wood Street, Cedar and Grove, and Marathon Way, or Hayden Road and Marathon Way, and Ash Street are the, you know, kind of the major traffic contributors um, in areas that needed to have upgrades for safety. One of the big topics of discussion was the placement of the bike lanes. The single separated bike lanes run from Cedar to Hayden Row, so that's bike lanes on each side in following the traffic direction. And then the, the separated two-way bike lane is really from Wood Street to Cedar Street. That's where there's bike lanes on one side going in both directions. The whole length. From, from Cedar to Wood Street. Yep. This past weekend, Hopkinton Drug hosted their annual open house. The beloved event featured music, arts and crafts, and of course, a visit from Santa. Here's a look. Hey folks, come on down to our 29th annual open house here at Hopkinton Drug and Hopkinton Card and Gift and join in the festivities. There's face painting, twas the night before Christmas reading, Santa, all kinds of events and uh, uh, shopping to do for the holidays. So you can come right down here to 52 Main Street in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. And with that, I'm gonna pass it off to a couple of Sanders helpers. This is Abby, she works in the lab and works with Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Abby the Elf, Merry Christmas, my young friend. I hope you're all gonna come down to Hopkinton Drug to see us, we got lots of fun times. There's goodies for the kids and for the grown-ups, and of course, you'll get to see me, Santa Claus. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. So I'm Allie and I'm with Sigveris. So we are a company that does compression hosiery, and um, Hopkinton Drug is one of our vendors. So you can buy compression hosiery here. Um, we have a certified fitter here. Her name is Lisa. So you can come in at any point. She'll measure you properly, um, educate you on our products. So. All right, what does uh, compression hosiery do? What's the benefits? What does it do? Um, so anybody that has any type of vein disease um, might need compression. It's also great for sports as well. So here we sell the sports sleeves and we also sell the traverse socks as well. Um, so that's going to help with lactic acid with um, build up. It's also going to help just with recovery, muscle recovery. It's going to just basically help your legs feel better at the end of the day. Um, so all of our compression, it's gradient, which means that at the ankle it has more compression and then it has less compression as you go up the leg. We're making it's cups. Cups. working on the sand ornaments, ring ornaments, 
Oh, I love that he's holding oh, the scarf. Man. That is very interesting. Very nice. No. I see you. They're buttons. Hey it's buttons. Say hi oh, to the camera. Carlo. Can you Show say your hello craft. to the camera? Hi. Show your craft. The camera the camera's camera's there. Right. What we got? Did you make so, a snowman? Yeah. What'd you make? Cheese. Wow. <laughs> what did you make? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I'm busy with my cookies. Very nice. Say Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You know, Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen, but do we call the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. Foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, as he shouted out with me, Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history, you'll go down in history. You'll go down in history, you'll go down in history. Coming up next on HCAM News, Elmwood School kicked off the 20th year of their We Deliver program. You'll get a look at the four candidates for the school superintendent position to replace the retiring Dr. McLeod, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. You're watching HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Hi. My name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history. We're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices. And we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Welcome back to HCAM News. For the 20th year, Elmwood School kicked off their We Deliver program. The program gives students an opportunity to run their own post office. Here is a look at the kickoff ceremony. For the 20th consecutive year, Elmwood hosted the annual swearing-in ceremony for their We Deliver program. The program allows students to learn what it's like working to operate a post office. The program helps build skills teamwork ability, as well as other applicable experiences which relate to the real world. Principal Ann Carver explained the program at the ceremony. So today is a We Deliver ceremony, a swearing-in ceremony. As I've already said, has a 20-year tradition, and it's, this program is offered in other areas, I believe, around the country. 
Uh, it's not specific to Elmwood School, but it's something that we've been doing here for a long time. And there's a pretty rigorous process to be a part of um, the postmaster position. So I, standing beside me uh, is Carl Sagami, who's the postmaster in Hopkinton. And we mimic our procedures a little bit uh, after the, um, the procedures that happen in real life. And so if you decide you're in third grade and you decide you want to be a postmaster, this is what happens. You, mostly what happens. You indicate to your families that you'd like to be considered for postmaster. And we set aside a day. This happened right before Thanksgiving. Come on. And everyone who got scored a perfect score on the written test was advanced to the next stage of our procedures. So then folks came back. Um, on a second day to write an essay. And the title of their essay, for kids who scored 100%, was Why I'd Make a Good Postmaster for the We Deliver program. And um, so students submit their essay to the office. We take the names off the essay because we do not want to be swayed by um, knowing who wrote what. And then we share the essay with volunteers, staff members who volunteer to read the essays. And they get sort of ranked one through, depending on how many kids, I think nine children um, scored a perfect score this year. So the essays are ranked, and the top four are chosen as um, postmasters. Hopkinton postmaster Carl Zagami swore in the postmasters as well as the rest of the student participants in the program. Enzo Approach, Acadia King, Maggie Flynn, your role at the uh, post office again? The post office. I'm the postmaster for both offices, the Woodville and the Hopkinton post office. Okay, what um, were you doing here today at Elmwood? Today we were doing celebrating the 20th uh, installation of postmasters and the uh, fellow crew of the little post office at the We Deliver program that they have at the Elmwood School. And for those that don't know, what does a postmaster do? Postmaster is a jack of all trades. Today I was actually out delivering, uh, but most of the time it's it's keeping the flow and making sure everybody comes to work, delivers all the mail that comes into the town, um, and that my crew comes home, goes home safely on a daily basis, um, and basically servicing the public in, in the Hopkinton town. And how do you like this uh, We Deliver program? It must be a, a good thing for the kids to really learn a lot about the uh, post office industry. It is, especially with the letters, everyone's been doing so much on email. It's nice that, you know, I'm sure when a grandmother or a grandfather mother or father still get that personalized card, whether it's a birthday card, holiday card, uh, even the sympathy cards, it means a lot to people and it's nice to see that old handwritten, you know, stationary items that are still going out throughout the Postal Service and things like that. And do you work with the kids to kind of show them what to do as well? I've come in a few times. I actually have seen how they do the operation and it's run just like the older days when there was less automation. Now the Postal Service is more automated. So more things are done by machines, but the kids are actually doing it the way it was way back when, over 100, 200 years ago when the mail system, you know, was going strong and everything was done handwritten and sorted by hand, by train, 
you know, move by train, and nowadays it's boats, planes. And I'm imagining with the holidays approaching, this must be a pretty busy time at the post office. Very busy this time of year. Right now is the parcel delivery, so I just ask people to be aware of, you know, if they know there's packages coming, just to be aware that they are out there and to make sure, you know, if there's any issues, please contact us at the post office. Uh, the phone number there is 508-435-8787. All right, thank you very much. Throughout this past week, four highly qualified candidates interviewed for the Hopkinton School Superintendent position to take over for the retiring Dr. Kathy McLeod. Here is a look at some scenes from this past week's public forum at Hopkinton Middle School. So here tonight is, is an opportunity for you to learn a little bit about me and my background and what I could possibly bring to the Oxbridge Public Schools. Uh, currently, I am the superintendent of schools in Oxbridge. This is my sixth year there. Prior to that, I was a director of education at a special education school, a principal at a middle school, an assistant principal at a middle school, a high school, an assistant principal at an elementary school, and I started my career as a guidance counselor. Over the course of the past 17 years, or nearly 20 years now, if I include my, my guidance background, um, my personal mission has been to uh, work with educators, work with families, work with communities to develop young children into independent, successful citizens. That's the big picture. And I've been fortunate to work in communities and in schools where that's been a shared mission. So I bring that to you today with that thought in mind. What are we doing together uh, to develop young people into contributing successful, independent citizens. I moved from the Arbor Public Schools to the Westboro Public Schools again as an English teacher, department chair, and I spent five years there as an assistant principal. I then moved to the Uxbridge Public Schools as their K-12 curriculum director, and I landed here a year and a half ago as the assistant superintendent. In that time, I have also taught for Lesley University and Worcester State University. I still do that kind of work. I have had, for almost 20 years, a private educational consulting business. Um, my partner in that is Arthur Brunel. We do a lot of work through Worcester State University. And so I feel like I've done many, many things that prepare me to work with curriculum, with teachers, with administrators. And I think now, having worked with Dr. McLeod for a year and a half, I would very much like to assume the role of superintendent to kind of keep that momentum that we have going forward. I think that we've built, or at least we're in the incipient stages of building some wonderful programs here in Hopkinton, and I would like to keep that going. So that is why, even if a year and a half ago I didn't think I would be here, I am here before you today. Uh, this is would be my third time um, in the district. Um, I started uh, as the technology director in 2004 from 2006, um, left to be a principal, came back to be a principal at Hopkins School, um, and really was the Impressed with the students, the teachers, uh, the community investment in education, uh, in the leadership team. Uh, today, I had an opportunity to visit the district. Um, I went to all uh, the schools, the high school, the middle school, Elmwood Center. I had a chance to visit the New Marathon Elementary School. Um, and it really, my visits really affirmed what I knew about Hopkinton. Um, first, the leadership team is dedicated and committed uh, to the work of um, educating students and making sure that we develop schools that um, are aligned with the district's mission of making sure that students are prepared for college and career, that they are well balanced um, and have creative endeavors and um, are well educated. Part of my role in the district is the civil rights coordinator, and so. We did a couple things as an administrative team. Um, one, if you look at our district improvement plan, and frankly, you're gonna see inclusivity is in all four of our major district goals and strategic objectives. Um, that was incredibly important to us to focus on an inclusive environment, and I think putting it forefront of a district strategic plan is, is a start in that direction. We have also done some other things. Um, we, in our middle level, we have chosen to partner with the Anti-Defamation League and we're bringing in a program called the World of Difference. And currently we're training all of our seventh graders in, across the district in all three middle schools and they will be delivering lessons on inclusivity and diversity to the rest of that middle school community through the rest of this year 
That same plan is in effect for the high school for next year, that we're moving that up to the high school. We're also taking an opportunity to look at literature across the district and the types of literature we're using to enrich students' lives in their daily reading, because I think the more we can embed uh, the key concepts and values that we want to teach in the literature kids are exposed to, the more that it becomes kind of a natural outflow of what we're doing. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channel. Standing by to tell you all about it is HCAM's promotions coordinator, Matt Clark. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, December 8th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers take on the Panthers in the first game of the varsity basketball season, live on HCAM Ed. On Monday, December 11th at 6.30 p.m., Princeton area poet and community activist Susan Roney O'Brien shares her poetry on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Tuesday, December 12th at 7 p.m., the Treblemakers perform in their latest holiday concert on a brand new HCAM TV special. And at 8 p.m., Stephanie Harris of the U.S. Humane Society talks about animal rights issues on another new HCAM TV special. On Wednesday, December 13th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, December 14th at 7 p.m., the Hopkins School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the Hopkins School Concert, 6th Grade School Concert, and High School Band, as well as the School Superintendent Interviews will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to view pictures and videos from throughout our community and also to stay up to date with upcoming events. If you have a Hopkinton related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com. This is Tom Nappy, and you're tuned in to News in 2, getting you up to date with everything Hopkinton in two minutes or less. For the 94th time, the Hopkinton Hillers met up with the Ashland Clockers for Thanksgiving Day football. A new tradition started this year as members of the Ashland and Hopkinton cross country team ran all the way from Ashland High School to David M. Hughes Stadium to deliver the game ball. The first points of the game came in the second quarter. A pitch to Will Abbott, and he finds the end zone from a few yards out. The extra point makes it seven to nothing Hillers. Two minutes, 40 seconds left in the first half. A high snap on the Ashland punt, and Connor Hebert makes the tackle for the safety, and the Hillers take the nine to nothing lead into the halftime locker room. Third quarter, 6.57 left. The Hillers turn it over at the three, and Ashland takes advantage of the situation. He's at the 10, and he's not able to get him. That's all the way down for a 97-yard touchdown. Later in the quarter, Ashland punting, and uh-oh, another high snap leads to another safety. 
and the Hillers go up by four, and that is how the score would stay. The Hillers end their historic 2017 season with a record of 11 and one, and take the victory by a final of 11 to seven. This has been Tom Nappy with HCAM News in 2. For the latest happenings in Hopkinton, be sure to check out the HCAM Facebook and Twitter page and also head over to our website, hcam.tv. And don't forget, HCAM News can be seen every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 and 10 p.m. On Tuesday, November 21st, Michael Whalen, Scotty Mackin, Sarah Ellum and Josh Hanna were inducted into the Hopkinton High School Hall of Fame. Here is a look at this year's annual Top of the Hill induction ceremony. The kids that have in town for Scott is just remarkable and it's been that same way ever since that very first day 17 years ago. Um, I was making up a list with his mother um, before, we, uh, before we met up tonight just of all the things he's involved in even outside of the school and the community for Hopkinton, uh, running the Parks and Rec summer camp, working with the fire department, the police department, um, volunteering, dressing up as Santa Claus, uh, refing Special Olympic basketball games and always teeing up at least one or two players, uh, working at the Boston Marathon, the Memorial Day and Veterans Day events that he does with, with uh, Mike Whalen, uh, the Turkey Bowl, Live for Evan race, my uh, Timlin race, uh, Michael's run, it just goes on and on and on. Wally's bodyguard at the, uh, the Little League parades, um, if there's an event going on in town, uh, you're most likely, likely going to see him there. Um, something that he's also very, very involved in is the Special Olympics. He's done skiing, softball, swimming, soccer, and basketball. Um, and nothing makes Scott prouder than when he has an event for uh, Special Olympics and he comes to practice or a game the next Monday and he's got the medal around his neck. And the way the kids react and, and go up to him and congratulate him and high five him um, for, for you know, his success with the Special Olympics is something that's always been really cool too. And on top of all that, he works at Home Depot. He's been working at Home Depot in Natick for 21 years, you know, running that place as well too. So he's a busy guy, but he handles it all. Um, so in closing, um, the perspective uh, that Scott brings to our students and our athletes and community members is truly remarkable. Um, the amount of messages I've received from parents over the years thanking Scott for his efforts and teaching their sons beyond just their specific sport is truly amazing. Um, I've been a part of a lot of difficult losses at all levels as a coach here at HHS, freshman JV and varsity. Um, but after each and every one of those losses, Scott's right there smiling, telling the team it's going to be all right. And each and every time the kids have responded in kind with great appreciation. Hey Scott, did you have a good time tonight? Yep. How does it feel to be honored? Are you happy? Happy. Congratulations, buddy. You deserve it. Uh, I hear my, I hear my, uh, my team battle. I said, I said, I'm, 